Hello, algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here, and you can tell I'm not in the room, or am I? I'm watching you. Hey guys, last time I had a sub, I got a bad report, especially from second period and kind of a mediocre report from third period. I need a glowing report from you guys. Not cool. I don't take off very often. It's obviously a good reason. I'm not in any danger. Everything's okay. This is just a follow-up from my stay in the hospital oh, whenever that was, six weeks ago or whatever. So please make sure you're doing your best. Now, if you haven't figured it out, I've postponed the test. I want you to watch this video, study a little bit more, and then the sub will pass out a worksheet for you. All right, let's get started with this. Okay, so first, you have to know how to calculate the slope. Okay, now, by the way, the president should have the airliner, and uh, the president should be pausing the video often so that we can do problems. So right now, uh, president, and I can't say Mr. President or Mrs. President because I've got different genders in different classes, but I want you to pause the video so that everybody can write down the formula to calculate the slope. Okay, here comes the formula. You should already have it written down. So m is going to equal y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, right? First x, second x, all that stuff. Now, I've suggested to many of you that you label these. Let's call this x1, y1, and x2, y2. When you go to substitute in the formula, I'm going to do this one with you, but then you're going to do the other ones on your own. We should be doing y sub 2, which is 5, minus y sub 1, which is 9, x sub 2, which is 12, minus negative 4. All right, and when we subtract a negative, that's like adding a positive. So I'm just going to go ahead and change both of those to adding a positive. So 5 minus 9 is negative 4. 12 plus 4 is 16. I'm going to simplify that down to negative 1 4. There's my slope. All right, go ahead. There is number two and number three. Pause the video, write them down. When you're ready, check out my solutions. Okay, here come my solutions. If you haven't figured them out, go ahead and do it and then watch the video. So let me see here. I'm going to get four plus five over negative six plus one. Yeah, I just cut out the middleman because I got to do four minus negative five. And I've got to do negative 6 minus negative 1. So that's going to be 9 over negative 5. And so my slope would be negative 9 fifths. Okay, let's move on down here to number 3. Oh, look, number 4 just popped up. But let's see the solution for number 3. Number 3, the slope is going to be 0. Yeah, because when you subtract in your numerator, your rise number, don't you get 0? and your denominator is not zero, zero over any number other than zero. Mark and Aiden, I'm looking at you. Zero divided by seven. Mark, say it. Zero. Okay, zero divided by negative three. Say it, Aiden, say it. Yes, absolutely. But I know you gentlemen are very smart, and you won't do this because this is, Justin can tell us, undefined. You can't divide by zero ever, 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 ever. All right, number four, go ahead and pause the video. Figure out the slope. When you're ready, unpause the video. Number four, we can say that there is no slope. Or you can tell me it's undefined. Either way. Why? Because you're going to do what? Five minus 12 over three minus three, and my run is going to be zero. Sorry, it doesn't look like a zero. What is going on here? Get rid of that number. Let's get a real zero up there. There we go. There's a real zero. And we're going to get negative seven. So that is an undefined slope, or you can tell me no slope. All right, so calculating slope is an important thing. Now, the next thing is dun, 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 direct variation. So y and x vary directly for all the problems below. I'm going to walk through number one with you just like we did. Okay, and uh, here we go. So remember, I'm going to use the equation y equals kx. And I'm going to use the equation twice. First, I'm going to use it here. 
I'm going to go y equals kx. And I know that y is 15. I don't know k. And x is 4. Well, I'm going to solve for k. So I'm going to divide by 4, divide by 4. And then k is going to equal 15 fourths. And since the constant of variation is like a slope, I'm going to leave it in improper uh, fraction form. Now I'm going to use y equals k again, only I'm going to use it with this information and k. So I'm going to go y equals k times x. I don't know why. It's a variable. I have to find it. k is going to be 15 over 4. x is going to be 20. I'm going to write it as 20 over 1, since I'm multiplying it by a fraction. A Wonder Woman is going to show up, and 4 is going to go into 25 times, and it looks like 15 times 5 is 75. So therefore, y's value is 75 when x is 20. All right, here's problem number two. I'd like you to pause the video and give it a shot. Here comes my solution. Y equals KX is going to tell me that 4 equals uh, K times 7. Therefore, K is going to equal 4 sevenths. So now I have my constant of variation, right? Okay. Well, now I use y equals kx again. I'm looking for y. How do I know I'm looking for y? Because it says find y. k is going to be 4 sevenths. And then x is 3. So if I multiply that out, I get 12 sevenths. There's my value of y. Now, if you want to go mix number on this one, you can. That would be what? 1 and 5 sevenths. But you don't have to. Okay, so y is 12 sevenths or 1 and 5 sevenths when x is 3. All right, here's another problem to practice. By the way, if uh, we don't get through the whole video in class today, you can go home and finish watching it. Yeah, that'd be your homework. All right, so go ahead and pause the video. When you're ready, unpause it. Here it comes. So y equals kx. 32 equals k times 10, right? k is going to equal 3 and 2 tenths. I went decimal on that one. Yeah, I did. Why? Because I thought it would be easy. I thought it would be easier. All right, so now I go y equals kx. Looking for y. k is 3 and 2 tenths. And I'm going to multiply that by 25. All right, let me see here. So 3 and 2 tenths times 25. I am getting 80. Y equals 80 when X is 25. There you go. All right, so that's direct variation. Don't mind that C at the bottom. That's just a placeholder for me. All right, we've got to know how to graph in slope-intercept form. Remember that in slope-intercept form, Y equals MX plus B. All right, where m is our slope, our rise and run, and b is our y-intercept. Our y-intercept, the place where the line crosses the y-axis. All right, so this first one here, first thing I'm going to do is identify my y-intercept. Looks like it's going to be 0, negative 8. Next thing I'm going to do, identify my slope. m is going to equal 2, or 2 over 1. I'm going to plot the y-intercept, and then I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. Rise 2 and run 1. Rise 1, 2, run 1. Yes. Rise 1, 2, run 1. Yes. Ooh, am I good or what? All right. Need a little help drawing some better points, but other than that, I'm doing pretty well. And there is my line, piece of cake. This should be easy stuff by now, ladies and gentlemen. Let me put some arrowheads on there. That one's got one, but I'll make it look the same. All right, guess what? It's your turn. Hopefully you've got some rulers. If not, the passers can pass out the rulers. They're in the popcorn box in the back of the room. Here we go. Go ahead and graph the green one. 
when you're ready, unpause the video, and here comes my solution. Then my solution will follow. All right, here it comes. So I am going to plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 0, 2. Bam, right there. My slope is 3 fourths, so I'm going to rise 1, 2, 3, and run 1, 2, 3, 4. It's kind of like we're dancing. Rise 1, 2, 3, run 1, 2, 3, 4. If I wanted to, I could change both signs and rise 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and run 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. And look at that, they all end up on the same line. So your line, your line, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And there we go. And shoot. All right. Very good. Okay. Here's another one for you to try, ladies and gentlemen. See what you do with this one. Unpause it, Mr. or Madam President, when you are ready for my solution. All right. The y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 2. How do I know? Because there's 0 x's in the equation. It's the same thing as y equals 0 x minus 2. So I need 0, negative 2 on my graph right there. My slope is easy. There's 0 x's in the equation, so it's like 0 over 1. So I'm going to rise 0, run 1. Rise 0, 1, 1. Oh, look at that. What kind of line am I getting? Uh, let's see. Morgan knows what kind of line I'm getting. I'm getting a horizontal line. Yes, I am. There we go. Oh, what just hookah waka did. All right. Uh, let me see here. That's all I need is for the video to go out because I'm almost done making it. It'll go out and I'll cry. Okay, so here's one more for you, ladies and gentlemen. Pause the video. See what you can do with it. Here comes my solution. My y-intercept is the origin, right? The origin. I'll bet you Chavi was really good at identifying that. He was pretty good about pointing that out. It's a direct variation. It's going through the origin. The slope is negative 3 over 1. Okay, so I'm going to rise negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to run positive 1. Arise 1, 2, 3, negative 3, and run positive 1. Yeah, it's a negative slope. It's got to go, be going down to the right. Remember that? Okay, so kind of look something something like that. All right, I'm put an arrow head on there. All right, very good. Let's move right along. Okay, match the equation with the graph. So I've got four equations over here. Stop and take a look at them. Stop and take a look. What is the y-intercept of the first equation of A? Hopefully you're saying zero. What's the y-intercept of B? Zero. What's the y-intercept of C? Is it zero? <coughs> no, it is not zero. There's zero x's, which means the slope is zero. This one has a y-intercept of four. I'm going to come back to those in a minute. Let's go A and B. A and B have y-intercepts of zero. They must be going through the origin. So let me see here. Is it going to let me? Can I move the whole equation? No. Can I move the whole equation? I can. So I'm going to take this down, and I'm going to take this one down. A little scared of negative, so I'm going to do that one last. But I'm going to come down and see if I have some lines that go through the origin. And look, there's one line that goes through the origin. Oh, oh boy, there's another line that goes through the origin. I'm so excited. There we go. All right. So now i got to figure out which one of these equations goes which with with which with graph? I, with which graph? <laughs> I can't speak, but that's okay. You guys know that already. So let's figure this out here. All right. Let's take a look here. Let's get this color here. And let's find the slope of this purple line number four. It goes through the origin, and I rise one, two, three, and then I run one. It looks like it has a slope of three. Four goes with y equals three x. Now this one here, I like that the three x isn't going here because it's going down to the right, which means the slope is negative. If I go down one, that's negative one over one. 
That's the slope of negative 1. This must be the equation y equals negative x. All right. Let's got two more to do here. Okay, we got y equals 4 and y equals 1 half x plus 2. Well, these are easy because, first of all, <clears throat> does C have zero slope? Yes, it does. Does D have zero slope? No, not at all. Which one of these pictures has zero slope? Well, the horizontal line. It must be y equals 4. Oh, by the way, what are the coordinates? Let's see, that's 4, 4. That's 3, 4. That's 2, 4, 1, 4, 0, 4, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 4, negative 5, 4, negative 6, 4. Did you hear it? I said 4 on every y coordinate. That's why the equation is y equals 4, because the y coordinate has to be 4 every single time. Yeah, that's the horizontal line. This one here must be y equals 1 half x plus 2, but let's test it. Y intercept of 2, check, slope, rise 1, run 2. There you go. Y equals one half x plus two. Okay. All right. I think there's one more page. All right. Sometimes, always, or never. Sometimes, always, or never. And I just showed you the answer, but I don't have time to fix it. Okay. A horizontal line has no slope. If you were paying attention, you know that is never true. A horizontal line has, what's that? What'd you say, Tommy? Zero slope, very good. Okay, a line with negative slope goes down to the right. Down to the right. Well, if you've been paying attention, Gabby, you know that that is always true. Okay, a line has a slope. Ooh, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Because most lines seem to have slope, except I seem to remember something about a rise number and a run number of zero, in which case it would be undefined or no slope. Yeah, that's only sometimes true. A vertical line does not have slope. So not all lines have slope. Vertical lines do not. So that's sometimes true. Okay, how are we doing here? And if x and y vary directly, the line will pass through the origin. Chavi knows that's always true. Yes, he does. Okay, a line with a run of zero has no slope, a line with a run of zero. So let's see, the rise number could be one, the run number would be zero, one divided by zero equals, wait, I can't divide by zero. That must have no slope. A line with a run of zero has no slope, that must be always true. I think that's it for the review video. Yep, the next one up is the honors video. You don't need to watch that. Um, so you can have the sub pass out the worksheet to you and you can study some more. The test has been postponed. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.